what's there to be upset about if you're making 35 million bucks? How much? 35 million. Damn. Dusty Baker says he doesn't sleep much and didn't realize how tired he was until he took his son fishing in New Mexico for some R&R over the All-Star break. One thing keeping him up at night, what to do at third base. The book Game Six by Mark Frost tells an interesting story. There was a camera operator behind the green monster who was dealing with some kind of rodent. And while he was trying to shoo the rat or the mouse away, the camera actually followed Carlton Fisk down the first baseline by accident. A famous shot, one that's part of the mystique of Fenway Park. It's way too early to start printing off playoff tickets, obviously. Adding more bats can still happen, but is this Reds offense built for a run in October? Reds owner Bob Castellini is not about to open up his checkbook for right around $100 million this summer to build for the future. Mitchell says he had a hard time during the day thinking about his grandpa, so he started making this journal at school with a couple of passages. Hey Pete, you're going to love this. I'm student of the month for Fort Wright. Pete, ever since you died, I've been worrying about you every day. I love you, Peter. No dorms at Georgetown anymore. For the first time, camp will be in Cincinnati at Paul Brown Stadium. The Phillies left the line score up long after the fans here at Citizens Bank Park had gone home. The zeros tell the story of a dominant performance by Halliday and one in which he joins Don Larson in the record book as one of two pitchers in the history of Major League Baseball to toss a no hitter in the postseason. Toughness, grit, determination, all out, all the time desire. These are words and phrases in pretty much every basketball coach's vocabulary, especially Mick Cronin's at UC. This guy used to walk the sidelines here at Roger Bacon. Bill Brewer died unexpectedly in 2007 of a heart attack after moving on to Princeton High School, leaving behind a legacy of memories for his players, three daughters, and a wife who remembers being a basket case during that title game in Columbus. You can bet the Bengals will be watching their phones probably for the rest of the season, needing some help to play the football that matters most in January. The first order of business is having the Jets lose so Cincinnati can move into a tie for that last wildcard spot in the AFC. The Bearcats snapped a three-game losing streak only to turn around 51 hours later and go to Louisville. Bracketology, NCAA tournament projections, scoreboards, the coach doesn't want any part of it. Here in Washington, D.C., the White House is, of course, where the president and his family lived during his term as commander in chief. And Barack Obama is a big college basketball fan. He, like a lot of us, put together an NCAA tournament bracket with one pick in particular that caught the attention of the Bearcats. UConn over UC in the second round to move on to the Sweet 16. The starting pitching was lights out, especially going up to the All-Star break with that trip on the West Coast. Are you comfortable? I know you're not the general manager. I know you don't make trades. Do you need another bat? Do you need to ignite this offense a little bit? Or are the bats in here capable of lifting you guys to where you want to go in October? Yeah, you know, I'm not sure. I, I think, um, you know, it's, a, it's definitely a tough call. I mean, we've had at times trouble putting runs on the board. Red owner Bob Castellini is not about to open up his checkbook for right around $100 million this summer to build for the future. This is a team in Cincinnati with no gaping holes in the everyday lineup and as the adage goes is built to win and win now. Jay Bruce has all of one hit in this the Reds 11th spring training game fanning against Kansas City. Homer Bailey pitched two scoreless innings. Tony Singrani gave up a big bomb to Alex Gordon. Picnic blankets mean trouble in Arizona. Mike Moustakis delivered a run scoring extra base rocket on Jose Arredondo and the Reds fell to two and nine with an eight to one loss to the Royals. You can look as good as you want on paper, you know, and we look damn good on paper, but um, you got to go out there and execute. And, you know, we, we've gotten so close and we just hadn't been able to do it, you know, to, to the level that we've wanted to yet. But I think, you know, I think everyone expects this to be the year, just like everyone expected it last year and the year before and the year before. But, you know, we, we've made some, some headway with, you know, actually doing it. So, um, you know, I think everyone's excited on the same page. Okay, I'll ask you, does anything short of a trip to the World Series mean the Reds failed in 2013? You make the call at 345-1212 or log on to local12.com to cast your vote. Opening day is less than a month away. Tonight's about hype and expectations for Dusty's 25. We'll bring you the results later tonight on the Sports Authority. Tweet me 
at Wells Zach, all one word, with why you picked what you picked. I'll read the best opinions on the air. We'll also have our basketball panel in studio to talk about the latest conference realignment plan with X to the Big East and UC figuring out what to do next. And this is worth the extra coffee in the morning or making sure the DVR is all set. We recently spent an entire day with Chris Mack, the head coach at Xavier. If you watched Friday night, that was the Cliff Notes version. This is longer with more action behind the scenes. Just how unforgiving can Big East basketball be? Despite not scoring a field goal the last seven minutes against Connecticut, the Bearcats snapped a three game losing streak only to turn around 51 hours later and go to Louisville. Bracketology NCAA tournament projections scoreboards. The coach doesn't want any part of it. Uh, we need to be on the attack uh, on both ends. Uh, obviously production is a is a big big thing, but I think our guys are going to produce more. Uh, the, the harder we play, the more we're swarming on the defensive end. So that's our focus and that takes energy and, uh, and effort and uh, guys being healthy and our bench is going to have to contribute. NKU coach Dave Beasold and Chris Mack and Xavier were on hand for the ninth region final. Quincy James of Holmes gave the Bulldogs a four point lead late in the fourth on Covcath, but Nick Frederick drilled a three for the Colonels to pull Covcath within one. It was 61 to 60 Holmes and Covcath got two great looks. One from Frederick to go ahead and later on the baseline, it was too strong. Holmes will go downstate to Rupp 62 to 60. Notre Dame and Highlands will meet for the Girdles title tomorrow night. The road to Columbus goes through Fifth Third Arena for Moeller and Turpin for a second straight year in the sectional final. That sophomore big man Nathaniel Fowler with the baby hook. Coach Carl Kramer, you know what? He says if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The high low set up Fowler at the rim with the left hand. Moeller used a 10 nothing run to start the second quarter to start putting the game away and putting it away they did. 74 to 40, Mo left Clifton with the win. Two district rivals met to advance two districts in Colerain and Northwest. The Knights set up Devin Walker in the corner. Colerain answered with attacking the basket off the dribble, and Kier Benny finished through contact for a three-point opportunity. Walker, this guy's a nice player, off the bounce, driving, separating, scoring. But Colerain relied on Milton Davis from straight away, just daring him to shoot, shoot. He shot it, 20 points, 65-61, the Cardinals prevailed. Riding into Evansville on the bus with a season high six game win streak, the Cyclones put up four second period goals to lead the Icemen who aren't playing ice cold with no mistakes. Top Gun reference. Scott, do you like it? Mm -hmm. That was Scott's answer. 8-3 in the third period. What does Danica do for an encore after a top 10 finish at Daytona? Pack up for Phoenix, but on lap 185, top of your screen, Patrick blew a tire and crashed into the wall. Fortunately, she was able to get out, walk out, she was okay. Carl Edwards on a green-white checkered finish, won for the first time in 70 races. Jimmy Johnson was second and Denny Hamlin third at the Subway Fresh Fit 500. In the UC football locker room, the nameplates point to the future of Bearcat football, and one in particular, kick returner Ralph David Abernathy IV, holds a prominent link to the past. I have a dream today. To a time when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. led the push for civil rights in the 1960s. Everybody has their cross to bear. Mine just so happens to be the Abernathy name. So I'm, I'm blessed and I'm truly honored to have such a man that changed the course of history as so close to my family. Ralph Abernathy died in 1990 before his grandson was born, a civil rights pioneer in his own right and one of Dr. King's closest friends and confidants. The two shared room 306 at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee on April 4th, 1968, when King was assassinated. These men, these circumstances, these times, no doubt bring on questions from people who never knew them. No matter um, death threats, no matter the uh, family issues, whatever, uh, whatever they went through, just what made them continue to say, I'm going to take a stand for what's in what I believe in. I'm held to a, a higher standard than the normal 19 year old because my name is Abernathy. Um, that one mess up that the typical kid might have, I'm not allowed to have because I might end up on a new stock in the year. This wall outside the Bearcats locker room chronicles UC's bowl history that dates all the way back 
to the 1940s, but not one time until this season had a UC kick returner taken one all the way back in the postseason. What's going on here is Abernathy with a nice looking return. I saw a hole, followed my blocker. And he has a chance to go all the way. Until this year, in where else but Memphis, Tennessee, the grandson, Abernathy IV, took one back 90 yards against Vanderbilt, a history maker for the Bearcats, to put UC in front to stay in a 31-24 victory that brought this home in the carry-on luggage. But it was good for him. His family was there. And obviously, you know, being in Memphis, you know, it was very fitting for him and his family uh, to be able to achieve what he did, and it was awesome. And amazing, perhaps, the way things work out, that the city of Memphis, Tennessee, can connect generations of Abernathy's together for two very different reasons. In Cincinnati, Zach Wells, Local 12 Sports. What'd you say? I don't remember. Is your ankle hurt? Huh? Is your ankle hurt? Yours? Mine's fine, how's yours? It hurts. You look good today. Like, how'd, you, how'd you hurt your ankle? Working like you worked. What's up? I get you. I get you when I come back. Watch out, sir. If you hit the car, sir, please. 